Epilepsy is a brain disorder that causes seizures. It's not rare. In fact, one out of every 26 people will be diagnosed with epilepsy. It's the fourth most common neurological disorder. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 25-year-old woman who came to the office with medication-resistant epilepsy. What that means is that she tried multiple medications and they weren't controlling her seizures. In cases of epilepsy, we order imaging of the brain to rule out something that may be causing the seizure, such as a tumor or other type of malformation. This MRI was completely clean for any type of tumor or vascular malformation, but when we look at the hippocampus, the hippocampus is a part of the brain responsible for learning and memory, but seizures originating from the hippocampus can be responsible for a particular type of epilepsy called mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. It's this part of the brain right here. It's prone to seizures because of the firing patterns and its hyper excitability. Here is her left hippocampus and her right hippocampus, and you can see that this right hippocampus is slightly smaller than the left. This is consistent with mesial temporal lobe epilepsy because it can be associated with hippocampal sclerosis. That basically means that this part of the brain can be damaged and more susceptible to seizures. That's why it looks smaller. Mesial temporal lobe epilepsy is the most common type of epilepsy. It's characterized by an aura that precedes the seizure. That means the patient will have symptoms that arise right before they have their seizure, and that can include things such as a feeling of deja vu, euphoria, a rising sense in the abdomen, a sudden strange odor or taste, or even sense of unprovoked fear. The seizures usually last from 30 seconds to two minutes. During the seizure, they can have lip smacking, a sense of looking away, they'll be unaware of their surroundings, and sometimes you can see jerking motion of the fingers. The exact cause of mesial temporal lobe epilepsy is unknown, but can be associated with a history of febrile seizures as a child. That means seizures that last longer than 30 minutes associated with fevers in childhood because it can lead to scarring of that hippocampus. Family history of epilepsy is also associated with this. A history of brain trauma can lead to temporal lobe epilepsy and other abnormalities in the brain, such as tumors, vascular abnormalities, or even dysplasia of part of the brain. Basically, those things could cause damage to that part of the brain and scarring over time, leading to the development of epilepsy when you get older. It's most commonly diagnosed in adolescents. The first line of treatment is, of course, medication. Most patients with mesial temporal lobe epilepsy will be controlled on medications. However, up to 30% may not achieve full control on medications. So then what do we do? In some cases where this type of epilepsy is not responsive to medications, surgery may be an option. Surgery, of course, isn't the first choice and there may be further testing that you need going into surgery to ensure that it will be successful. That can include video EEGs, functional MRI tests, a test called the WADA test, even electrodes that we place into the brain prior to surgery to help determine where the seizure focus is. The most common type of surgery for this type of epilepsy is something called an anterior temporal lobectomy. That's right, it's a surgical procedure where we remove the anterior part of the temporal lobe of your brain, including the hippocampus, or the part that I said earlier, that's the part that's causing the seizures. Some patients may qualify for a more focused resection of the hippocampus that's called amygdalohippocampectomy. Say that twice. The data on that surgery suggests that two thirds of patients going into surgery will become seizure free after the surgery. 75 to 95% of patients will achieve a meaningful improvement in their seizure control. That's pretty powerful. There are other options besides this type of surgery that may also help these patients gain seizure control, including minimally invasive MRI-guided laser ablation. That's where a probe can go into that damaged part of the brain and cauterize it or burn it, causing it to stop causing seizures. And there's even other options include vagal nerve stimulation and deep brain stimulation. Vagal nerve stimulation is where a device is wrapped around the vagus nerve and it delivers an electrical stimulus to that nerve, which will reduce the amount of seizures. And believe it or not, some kids can even become seizure-free on a ketogenic diet. You know, like the keto diet, which a lot of people do as a fad diet, reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you intake 
will allow your brain to process off of ketones as an energy source for the brain. Now, we don't know exactly why it works, but many children can become seizure-free on that diet, but they have to be compliant, which is really tough. And I can fully testify to that because I have been on that diet for about a year and it's almost impossible as a child. Now, back to our patient. With her diagnosis of medication-resistant epilepsy, and the MRI findings confirming the mesial temporal sclerosis, I sent her out to a specialist neurosurgeon because I personally do not perform this procedure, performed an anterior temporal lobectomy on her, and she has been seizure-free for over four years. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.